you're looking for is a stable inside claw. Now, that claw is pretty good, all right? This will come out when we trim her. You always want to leave the heel, so what we're looking to do is make that stable. Again, I'm taking off as little amount as possible. All I want is a flat surface, all right? And I've left the heel, because the more you take off the heel of this one, the more we're going to take this one down. Yeah, mate. So we can see the outside claw is too high. So anybody want to, you know, I would say she's 65, 35, somewhere along those lines. But everybody's got their own uh, opinion on it. But this one's taking 65% of the weight, and this one's yep. not doing anything. So your problem is almost surely in that one. Come on. So the... Step two is a two-part step, so making sure the lengths are the same, then equalising the levels, making sure that we're aiming for 50-50 weight bearing. In some situations, that, that's not always going to be achievable. If there's disease claw, that, claw, that outer claw is swollen, enlarged, then you may never be able to get 50-50 weight bearing. But in this scenario, I think we should be able to mm. achieve it, shouldn't we? There's plenty of heel depth on that, uh, on that inner claw, so away you go, Rob. It really is the <laughs> it, it is the secret to to good quartering having those <laughs> Anyway. Okay, so that's the end of step two. Step three is then about dishing out, modelling out the sole ulcer site. Now we tend to do a wide, flatter dish on the outer claw, a much steeper, narrower dish on the inner claw. And really that inner claw dish is probably as much about trying to uh, reduce the amount of material that traps in that, uh, in between the interdigital space. The dishing on the outer claw is very much about trying to take the weight off the sole ulcer site, that point where you're going to get pinching and sole ulcers developing. Okay, so that's the end of the what we call the, the functional trim, storing the shape of the foot. You haven't had to do too much so far, and in fact, if you're if we're working quickly, then that would only take a minute to get to that stage there. And as I said to you last night, the problems usually then start to jump out at you. Mm. And it's always worth confirming if you think there's a source of pain, just uh, mm. confirm that you are on the right sort of, sorts of tracks. So, Rob, if you have a look at that, you probably think that there might be a point that's painful around about there. And various ways in which you can tell whether that's the, the source of pain. You can use hoof testers, you can tap on the claw, you can twist the claw a little bit and see if she reacts. Even common sense sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's something pretty obvious there. Come on. Okay. Slightly. Okay. It's certainly gone. All right. Let's um, cause that then. So that, that's your typical white line disease, and like we talked about last night. There may be a nutritional basis to it, but largely it's down to um, turning in and out of the parlour. It um, could be a, an, a sort of a, a, an event that occurred when she was out in the cubicle. She, Stepping off, the slipping on something, yeah. treading on an uneven surface somewhere, just split that white line, and once that split occurs, it, you get material trapping in it, and it just pushes its way up. And uh, yeah, it's a um, relatively easy problem to treat when you sort of catch it at this stage before it's sort of worked its way right the way back. Hey. So, Rob, are you happy? There's uh, 
Yeah, you've ruled out every, everything else that could be causing. I'm just going to take it situation. because of that. I'm just going to drop it down a fraction, just to yep. give it a ten days rest. All right. Yeah. So step four is about relieving the weight off the painful claw. So we suspect that that was pr probably the main source of pain. Yeah, you've got 60 to 40 on the good claw. Right? So by trimming down the back t two thirds of that claw, we've we've essentially achieve a very small block on the other side because we've taken, transferred a bit more of the weight on there. How long do the blocks normally take to wear away then? I always reckon you ought to be looking to take them off or replace them after about four weeks. They, they can stay on for six weeks but after four weeks the wear on some of them can start to become a bit of a problem. If you get them spot on then they, they can wear down fairly evenly but it's worth certainly reviewing it after a, after a month. Can you just cut the blocks in half? Cut the blocks in half.